Molly Squad. And right now the squad is not set up. Yeah, I'm in the loading screen now. But if you go to your social tab and go back down all the way to the bottom, you have to disable the recruitment, and then you can type in a uh, description for the squad. And once you re-enable a recruitment, the squad will then be will then show up in Squad Finder. There we go. I'm back in it. I'm gonna. Uh, just throw me in Charlie so I can check. If you did. Uh, so Junior is basically your squad lead right now on Charlie and your squad is locked. People cannot join in. That's what happens when you're uh, when a brand new squad is created. Are you still around Junior? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just trying to figure out now how to unlock. Yeah, yeah. alright. So did you press B? Oh here we go again. Okay, there we go. Oh. Yeah, you just click disable recruitment, type in like, you know, just test or SKL leadership training into the description and enable recruitment and then the squad will be showing up on Squad Finder. And this might seem like a fairly simple thing, but a lot of new squad leads forget to unlock their squads and therefore people will not be able to see it. Okay. So, it's a good yeah, thing I to know how to do it. Remember. But I did it too, but yeah, and then while you're uh, while everyone's on P, so click P, go to the social tab but over below platoon, is where it says squad certs. If you plan to lead squads or lead a platoon, you need to cert out all of this stuff eventually. Uh, all of the smoke is something that only squad leads can do, and it's a good way to mark Sundays. And under coordination, the request reinforcements thing very important just for kind of herding our blue. Blueberry oh, yeah, the uh, colored smoke, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. I was wondering how you yeah. get that. Yeah, squad search, is, that's where you get smoke as a squad link, and the request uh, reinforcements is for offensive and defensive requests. And the offensive and defensive requests uh, effect, but do not control the join combat button that new players would press. So say, it's more like a tiebreaker thing, if you ever, let's, let's look at the map on Amherst and see if there are any, yeah, see, there's a defensive request of the auger. If you look over at the auger in the top, or I'll put a squad waypoint there. Okay. Right there, you see that little big shield on the mini-map? Or on the map there itself? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I've that, seen those, yeah. Yeah, that is a defensive request that squad leads can place, and it, we, no one knows how it affects the algorithm, but my, our best guess is that it's a tiebreaker. Uh, if someone hit J and there were two fights that were roughly even in pop, the algorithm would prefer the fight that has the most requests at them, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Oh, okay. So, so I was wondering what the point of those. So finally, now my question has been answered. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so it, it affects the joint, the joint combat key, and a lot of new players or solo players basically just hit J to get to the best fights. But so we use offensive and defense us to kind of herd the the randoms around various huh, okay there's an offensive for no growth you can see it as well it's a target thingy and another thing uh people are, are there people still in queue or is everyone more or less on amorish i'm i mean i was and then i joined vr but oh i'm seven now that skipped up a lot yeah i'm almost yeah, done, I'm, I'm six in the queue all right, no big deal. Mm. I am going to set a platoon waypoint at the warp gate, and you all can ride or walk over there. And uh, I just want to show a little area over here at the warp gate while we also go over some more basic stuff. So, for all of you broodlords, I do want to do a little public service announcement. Uh, any member of SKL that has an NSO character that is also in SKL, you need to make it very clear to an abathur or higher what character of yours is tied to what VS character of your that we can mark your advancement. Um, I know, for instance, uh, for any of you who know Bjorn, he has an NSO character whose name is like Beat Boot. 
or whatever, and I had no idea that was him until I heard him speak. For any of you that, you know, want your progression to be, you know, measured correctly, like, please make sure that we know who your NSO characters are and what VS character they're tied to. And if you don't have an NSO character, don't worry about it. Like me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That public service announcement uh, I have gone. I an NSO character, but I don't really use it. It's still only VR8. Yeah, it's, it's only really something you have to worry about if you have an NSO character, plan to play them semi-regularly, and are and they also are members of SKL. Those three kind of criteria need to be met before we care. Oh, now I'm 13 for some fucking I, reason. I honestly only got the NSO character to like, try out the new stuff, and I didn't like it. Right. You're 13 because they are members that... They get in front of the kids, yeah. I mean, so I'm well, just I never gonna fucking join them because. Oh, no, not I, exactly. But... Let's let's just let's just be simple, guys. Let, let's just go to Endar because I just want to go over some basics. So let's just go to Endar because that's there's no queue for Endar. I mean, it's been like that for fucking fifteen minutes. Yeah, the queue can be a fickle mistress sometimes. I was on Amrish, but then my mic wasn't working, so I had to re-log, and then uh, kind of threw everything out of the whack. But everyone, just go to the Endar. There's no, uh, no line or anything. Okay, so going on with some basics real quick. Um, has any of who who is in here that is actually a brood lord hitter, and yeah. Invisus, and the other ones are just legionnaires that are interested. In okay, so hitter and Invisus, have you uh, messed around with any of the armory yet? I know that hitter does modules. Uh, I do modules. I do anvils. I uh, used to be able to do steel reins back in the day before they changed it. Right. So you you would say that you have a pretty good understanding of the, of the anvils. Uh, I have a pretty good understanding of the whole armor. Cool, cool, cool. What about you, Invisus? I've never touched the armor before. Okay. So just very briefly, uh, anyone who applies for the Broodlord promotion or is already a Broodlord has access to the light, medium, and heavy anvil. And they have access to all of the dis facility modules. Facility modules are the simplest one. Mo the ones that are most important just give discounts. So if I went into the map, say the map screen right now, I right-clicked Crossroads Watchtower, I could, as order above, put uh, discounts up with under module assets. And that basically just means any member of, of uh, Vanu can spawn vehicles out of that hex at a cheaper cost. Uh, there's another one that like heal like that just gives uh, passive heals to phalanx turn and uh, passive heals to infantry in the hex. The modules, use them as much as you want. As a squad lead or as a platoon lead, they only use green, and we go through green really crazy fast. So use as much of those as you like. Um, as far as the anvils are concerned, they're a mixed bag. The light and medium anvils, uh, lights are, will just spawn a flash or a javelin, depending. And um, medium anvils will spawn a harasser and ant lightning. So those are basically only useful for our play. Uh, you, you could drop a light anvil down for out flash or whatever, but it's not super oddly. Uh, the one that's most important is the heavy anvil, and we usually try to get three. Uh, those are mostly useful to a squad, a squad lead or a platoon lead for on solution, uh, i.e. a Sunday. So, let's go somewhere pretty safe just to show the trip. I won't hit that U key, we're going to go to Paris Amp Station. I mean, when you wake up.
Alright, pass amp station loading in now. Yeah, why is that a thing? Why does the spawn didn't show up right away for it? And let's just uh let's run over run over here. For them, can you please explain how spawns work about the uh, 10 seconds and 30 seconds? Yeah, sure. So there, there's like a 10 or 30 second delay uh, based on uh, distance and population on um, when the spawns show up. Just to make rapid redeploying not quite so rapid. Um, there's also the problem of population. So we have an overpop in the hex. You just will not see uh, routers or, or hard spawns, but you will. The only thing that gets to uh, overpop are beacons. So if you're in a squad, uh, one of the reasons that a lot of the higher ups like really value beacon is because they're the only way to get through overpopulation, and they are also the only way. Um, oh, it's not the only way. The only way to get through overpopulation, and they're on like a what is it like a 280 second cooldown or something like that. Um, so if you override someone else's beacon, you're basically wasting two of 12 people's uh, chance to drop one. So very briefly, I'm going to go over the heavy anvil real quick. We have plenty of green, so just look up these stairs real quick. If you guys zoom in your mini-map or hit M, and you look right at the tower that we're standing in front of on the map, you see like a light rectangle right there. That is the elevator shaft. So a neat little trick that you can do with heavy anvils is you could put your mouse right on the center of that light gray and then drop a heavy anvil. Uh... Horace, can you pull back? I'll drop it now. So I'm going to just click right in the center of that, and then I'm going to right-click, drop a heavy anvil, and then look at the little template shows. And you can do this on any of these towers. And the cool trick here is I walk it up, I pull a Sunday. <laughs> oh. I've seen that before. I was wondering how they get it in there. How they I, I assume they just drop. Yeah, and now we have a deployed Sunday inside a tower, and this can be used. This can be used on any of the bases that have a tower. This is one of the more interesting uh, options for a Sunday. You can as well dr drive it in, since you can, you said you have been wondering. In most of the maps, you can actually drive them in as well. Sometimes you can't, it really depends on the incline at the base yeah. of, the, of the stairs. Uh, but this is kind of a way to set up a spawn ahead of time. And you can, like like I just did, you can kind of write yourself if you're not in a rush. That way people can kind of still use the elevators. If you... But this is just one of the many examples as to why the heavy anvil is so useful for a squad or platoon. It's some pretty interesting uh, There's also a lot of places... Uh, that are interesting. Apron and Dar. Yeah, there's a lot of places that are interesting. Place a, a heavy anvil top of something. Um, a lot of the tower bases, like off the top of my head, uh, Madison's Samir have the giant towers. You can actually get. Well, let's not use too many anvils because we are a little low on them. But yeah. Sorry, I was giving it a try. Yeah, fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'll just need to remember to make some more here. And yeah, okay, someone already started one. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, I would just advise you all, uh, all of you that have access to the uh, Broodlord rank, just mess around with the anvils. Don't don't drop five in five minutes. But if we have four or five, mess around with it. Uh, there have been plenty of times where I've thought to myself, oh, I wonder if a, a Sunder can come here. So I'll drop an anvil, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes it's in a no deploy zone and sometimes it's perfect. It all just really depends. Does anyone have any questions about the armory assets? Now, I'm not going to go over the Swarm Lord above things right now unless people really want to know more about the skill reigns or the Citadel Shields or the Orbitals. I'm really just kind of going over basic armory stuff. But if anyone wants to know, now's the time to... The Citadel Shields and Orbital Strikes only for the rank that you described? That to be yeah, it, Swarm Lords, Abathers, or Swarm Lords and above can uh, can use all the full armory. So Swarm Lords are, uh, 
It goes uh, Legionnaire, Broodlord, Swarmlord, Abathur, um, Cerebrate, and then the Outfit Leader. So Legionnaires cannot use anything in the uh, Armory. Um, Broodlords can use Modules and Anvils, and then Swarmlords and above can pretty much use everything. Imagine uh, talk about the rule if you use it, then construct it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like we're talking about now, if you drop an anvil, you build an anvil. If you, if you're ever a swarm lord, uh, if you drop an orbital strike, you use an orbital strike, or you build an orbital strike. Same thing with anything. If you if you drop it, you build another one. And if you can't build another one, you need to keep an eye out for when you can't. Um, a lot of the Abathurs Plus will uh, keep an eye on our expeditions in the armory. We can crack those for some emergency funds if we need to power the armory and stuff like that. Now, I want everybody to briefly talk about Amr or Indar because uh, since we're here, it's a good time to talk about the strategy of the map. Uh, this stuff only pertains to squad and platoon leads, but it's kind of good to know for anyone who's just in the squad because Indar, as many of you know, is probably the grindiest of the continent. Um, almost all of the, la the lattices will end in some kind of slog at some point. So if you hit the M key real quick, I want to go over the, the warp gates just very briefly. And bear in mind that a lot of these are just very oversimplified generalizations. But they'll kind of give you a good idea of like what to look for, what your squads or should focus on. So I now the, the VS, imagine if the, the continent was fully open. Um, we're, we're, we're operating just under fully open continent, so I, I don't care about unstable. Uh, imagine if the continent was fully open. The Endar Western Warp Gate is considered by most to be the strongest of the three warp gates on this map. Um, the reason for that being is that if you can take the line, and I'm gonna look, we're looking from left to right here, so if you go all the way to the west side of the map, if we can hold the line of Quartz Ridge, then right to the right of it is Endar Com, uh, and then Snake South, Crossroads Watchtower. Can you and then, for the people that don't know where these are? Yeah, sure. So Alpha Squad Waypoint, Quartz Ridge, Bravo Squad, Indarcom, Charlie Squad, Crossroads Watchtower, and we don't have a Delta, so I'm going to go Platoon Waypoint, or no, that's wrong, Platoon Waypoint on Scarred Maiden. So if you're ever in a squad, leading a squad or uh, in a platoon, as either leader or just a member or whatever, these are just four bases to keep in mind uh, on the Western Warp Gate. And a lot, some, of, some of these bases will also apply to the other warp gate. Uh, the reason being is that the three hardest bases to take on the map are Quartz Ridge, Crossroads Watchtower, and Howling Pass. Um, Howling Pass is not in our interest in the western warp gate, but two of the three ones I just named are. Um, Quartz Ridge just kind of is a ni nice uh, base to have to keep the Hivar tech plant area safe. Indarcom is a surprisingly easy base to defend, assuming that um, a bunch of armor isn't getting set up there. Crossroads is extremely hard to take. And, and Scarred Mesa is another base that's very easy to hold. So that entire line forms a little rubber band wrapped around our territory. And if you hold that rubber band line, then anything that you have beyond it is just gravy. Um, you will almost always win an alert if you can hold that line. The Western Warp Gate is largely considered the strongest Warp Gate for this reason, because it is just as, with TI Alloys being gone, it's very hard to bust through crossroads and uh, go into big cutoffs. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Western Warp Gate's only real uh, weakness, I'm going to clear the waypoints real quick. The only real weakness used to be if you could uh, bust through TI Alloys, you could go to this base, which, and then leapfrog to this base. And th those two bases cut off the biolab and the nor and the ba bases up north of it, assuming they're connected through core. Now with TI Alloys being gone, the only way to do that cutoff is to take Crossroads Watchtower. And as I said a minute ago, Crossroads Watchtower is a very important, very easy to... So the Western Warp Gate is strong because of these fortress bases. And unless, does anyone have any questions about the Western Warp Gate? Otherwise, I'm just going to breeze through the Northern and Eastern. And remember, these are overgeneralizations. I'm just kind of like giving you guys an idea of like what to be thinking about on these Warp Gates. Nope. Okay. So, uh, what, what was it, Jitters? I just 
I was just saying no. Okay. So the reason the Indar is a slog is because pretty much all the warp gates that I'm about to, that I'm going to talk about follow these generalizations to where in general, if you can hold X, Y, and Z base, you will have such a strong defensive line that you are in a strong position. Uh, the Northern Warp Gate is probably the most flexible of all of them because it controls a lot of uh, lattices. Um, so let's just go over that real quick. On the Northern Warp Gate, Alpha Waypoint, you need to hold Indar Excavation. You need to hold the Haka Amp. And I will get back to the Haka Amp in just a second. You need to hold um, some... This is a, the Northern Warp Gate's a little bit more flexible. You need to hold something along the lines of Ceres Watchtower, which is Bravo Waypoint, or Ceres Hydroponics, I mean, or Galaxy Solar, or Briggs. The, the middle area is a little bit more flexible than the other ones, but so, something in this area you need to make a stand at. You can afford to lose Ceres Hydroponics as long as you commit to defending Galaxy Solar. You can afford losing uh, the Galaxy Solar as long as you commit to holding Briggs or Jane 908. There's a little bit more, more flexibility in the center, which is why I personally prefer the Northern Warp Gate, even though I would probably agree the Western Warp Gate is stronger. And then all the way to the right is the third base that I say is one of the hardest bases to take, Charlie Waypoint, Howling Path. So generally speaking, if you hold Indar Excavation to the distant west, Howling Pass to the distant east, and then make some kind of stand in the center, you're in a pretty good position. The The reason that the, the I prefer the Northern Warp Gate is the options that the center give. Um, if you hold, say, Ceres Hydroponics and decide to let Briggs go, you can then maybe push west and hit, hit some of the bases that are of hurting the Haka Amp, but like over in this area. Um, and going back to the Haka Amp, like I said I would, the Alpha Watt Squad Waypoint is the Haka Amp. It's an easy base to hold. Um, I would not see it as a base to not push out from. Uh, for instance, Indar X and uh, Howling Pass, Charlie Waypoint, are bases that you could, in theory, just defend and never attack from. You might take Lowland Trading, because it's a 60-second base south of Indar X at some point, just to get a 1%. Um, the Haka Amp, which is Alpha Squad Waypoint, is, is not a base that I would only defend from. It is a staging area. Uh, at some point, it is always a good idea to move straight south and hit the Haka Southern Post south of the Haka Amp to give the Haka Amp some. And once you take that, just grab a bunch of armor, grab a bunch of Sundays, drive up. Oh, hey, that's, everything's up. Open up. Drive up to Indarcom and take that, and if you can take Indarcom, remember when I was talking about the Western Warp Gate, I said Indarcom was one of the more important bases to hold. This is one of the nuts to crack. Um, if you're on the Northern Warp Gate, if you can crack Indarcom, that opens up, and just watch the map with me for a second. That opens Indarcom into Aladdin Bro Broadcast Hub. Take Aladdin Broadcast, go into Aladdin Research Lab, and here you have some pretty interesting options. Depending on the population, depending on how well you're doing, how many blueberries are helping you out, you can do some interesting things from a Latinum research. For instance, you do the inverse of what I was talking about the cutoff earlier, and instead of going botany wing to have you go to research botany wing here, and once you take all of those lattices like that, you cut off the bio lab, and you have and probably are just going to bio lab. Conversely, let's rewind time just a second. If you go to a Latinum research lab, and you see that there's a big fight going on in court, and there's, say, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes left on the alert. You could do something super sneaky, go NS Secure Data Lab into Havar Physics Lab into Havar Data Bank, which will cut off their, the which will cut off Quartz Ridge and make it much easier to take. So it's in dark and th this all comes to the, the fact that if you hold the Hotka Amp all the way back up north, this gives you options. Um, if you, for whatever reason, are doing bad in the center, say around Ceres Hydroponics, uh, and you lose a listening post, they're pushing Galaxy Solar, they're pushing J98, Briggs is under threat, you can push out of the Haka Amp, and instead of going to Indarcom immediately, you could go Seabed Listening Post, into Ceres, into, I don't even know, maybe if they're going for Briggs, you could just like try to threaten the crown. Uh, there are options, and that, that's one of the reasons why I like the center. You have a ton of options. Um, 
another interesting one is up north, just follow with me, at Briggs Laboratory. The only thing that you really want to be mindful of on the Northern Warp game is how Tech Plant Cut. How Tech Plant Cut Off is highly dependent on whether or not you lose Howling Pass. Early squad waypoint right now. If you lose Howling Pass, you're in a lot of trouble because all they have to do is go Sunken Relay, which is a 60 second cap, straight in the Mal Watchtower. And if they take what is currently the Alpha Squad waypoint and the Charlie Squad waypoint, they cut off Mal Southeast, Mal Southwest, and Mal Tech Plant. And that is a really bad cutoff for them. Um, and it's very important at this point to either hold Briggs to keep the to keep the connection or hold Mal Watchtower. In this case, I would say always hold Mal Watchtower. Uh, but you're in a pretty bad spot just for losing Howling Pass. So just bear in mind, you might have grand plans during an alert, and I understand the frustration of having to redeploy off of like a fun armor fight or you know, you're let's look over to the left real quick. You're going for that like really sick uh a quartz ridge cut off, so you're at Havar Physics Lab and you're just rubbing your hands together and you're thinking, ooh, once we take Havar Physics Lab, we're going to go straight into Havar Data Bank and we're going to cut them off. But if you see the Howling Pass is under attack by like a 48 to 96, you need to cut off that plan. Hope that maybe you can tell everyone hit that U key. You have to go to the Howling Pass and defend it. Once you defend it, reevaluate the situation, go elsewhere. It's, um, it's a very important base to hold. In our excavation, uh, if you're on the north, I know I've ta been talking about the northern warp gate for a long time, but I like the northern warp gate. Uh, just generally speaking, you have options in the center, and you always want to hold Indar X, always want to hold Howling Pat. Does anyone have any questions about the northern warp gate? Otherwise, I'm going to go to the eastern. I don't believe so. Okay. Now, for the eastern warp gate, uh, this is... Partially a, I would probably say this is the hardest warp gate. I think most people would agree that this is the hardest warp gate to play on. Um, there's a lot of fun fights that you can have. The problem with this warp gate is that you, in my opinion, need to hold bases that are very, very important for the other warp gates to have a chance. So if you look at the map real quick all the way down south, I would say you absolutely have to take Scarred Mesa from the from the western warp gate, but there's already a conflict here between the western and the east, because that's a base that they. And then, unfortunately, I would say if you want to have a chance, at some point, you need to dogpile Crossroads Watchtower, one of the hardest bases to take. Um, if anyone has wants any advice on how to take Crossroads, feel free to ask, and I will. Get it. It's a very hard base to take. And then from Crossroads, the only real base that's not in contention is the hold Palisade. Palisade gives you options, Charlie Squad Wave. And you need to hold NS Material Storage. So, as you can see, two of the four waypoints I just placed are directly conflicting with the Western Warp Gate. And they're ones that you need to take. Um, Scarred Mesa, you cannot take it for a while. Um, a lot of the times when I'm leading a platoon, if we, like, roll off of a SMR alert and go straight into end up, I will maybe say, before you take your bathroom breaks, let's all dogpile crossroads while everyone else is taking a bathroom break. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's literally, it's so important to me that I would rather ask people to not, you know, go to the bathroom for five minutes just so we can take crossroads the second we get. Um, you will win or lose end our often pre-alert, uh, so that's pre-the alert starting. You need to shore up your line, or else you are going to be in for a slog. Um, like, currently, I would not, I, even though that it says that the TR is in the lead, I would say that the TR are very, very not going to win this alert. Uh, they might surprise me, I don't know. But they need to be going in this material storage. They, the only base that they hold of the ones that I put waypoints on is the Palisade, which is probably the least on. You need to have NS material, you need to have uh, Scar Mesa crossroads, you need to have some combination of these waypoints to have some semblance of a stable line. And then from here, if you do get this line, you're in a little bit of a better spot. If you can get crossroads, especially that, like I said, that opens up the, the Snake Ravine and the Botany Wing, the Latinum Research, which will cut off a Biolab, um, or you could, you know, just take crossroads and go straight down to the Xenotech, uh, and that gives you options. Basically, 
on all these maps, you need to get into a position to where you have options from that point moving. Now, does anyone have any questions about anything regarding Endar? I'm surprised you didn't talk about region for Garson. One of my personal favorites when I play is War Gate. I um I hate Region Rock. Yeah. I um Yeah, I mean like very, very late in the alert. If you are in a position where you have everything that I have a waypoint on from the Eastern War Gate, if you have Scarred Ma if you have Crossroads Watchtower, if you have in this material storage and if you have the Palisade, you then just need to ask yourself who do you fight? Um, if the NC is doing really well in this case, the Northern Warp Gate, you want to go for the Maltech plant cutoff, so you're going to have to hit Howling Pass with everything you got, uh, go up to Mount Watchtower, either have another platoon or a squad take Briggs, and then do the Maltech plant cutoff. If the Western Warp Gate's doing really good, then Dogpile Regent Rock. I'll tell you right now, Regent Rock's a pain in the ass to take most of the time, unless they just let you have it. Um, <laughs> It's it's not a, it's not the same kind of pain in the ass as Crossroads or Howling Passive. Regent Rock is just almost always going to be an armor fight, and a lot of our public platoons uh, focus on infantry play. So you're going to either have to A, try to slum it out in the buildings while you're just getting heshed to death, or B, ask a bunch of people that might not be comfortable in armor to get into armor. It just It's an awkward base to if you're in a great position where you just have all of the waypoints I placed, feel free to decide between Howling Pass and Regent Rock. Um, at the very least, you'll be, you know, hitting their pop down somewhere, defending rather than attacking you, which is always a pro. Um, any other comments or questions about Indoor? I have a comment about how to take Indoor Comrie. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Shine the terminal, get some vehicles up on the point itself. Also, if you stay on the balcony, at the edge of the balcony, you're actually getting points. Yeah, yeah. So and in our com, you you want Sundays, uh, as many Sundays as you can put put on the mesa itself on the top of the hill. Um, all the Sundays on the bottom are not very good spot. You want a router in the triple stack if you can. I'm gonna put a platoon waypoint about the base we're talking about. Uh, right on the platoon waypoint is the only real building that matters in our com. You want people that are comfortable in armor, and, and I'm emphasizing the word comfortable here, because a lot of our squad leads and platoon leads are for our public platoons. We do very few HK ops, and the, the, I mean, the HK dudes are doing it right now. I'm talking specifically about our brood lords who run public platoon. If they are comfortable in armor, tell them to hack the terminal, pull some lightnings, and camp the A point, and, and, the, and the enemy will just catch to death. Anyone who's not comfortable in armor, just needs to protect, hopefully, what is the router in the platoon waypoint building there, which... And as Hitter said, you can kind of contest the waypoint from the balcony in that triple stack. It's a base that is both easy and hard to take, just depending on how much pop you throw at it and uh, how much armor you have. Um, but it's it's an interesting base. It's definitely probably the most fought-over base between the, the western and northern warp gate, just because it's at least not a stronghold base. Hey, usually... What I do, if it's super important to take it, it depends on where we are with the world, I usually ask for a hack on and battle buses and battle ants, if possible, on the point itself, because you can really roll them on the point. Yeah. Which is better, man. Go ahead, what was it? from the western warp gate, what is the strategy? Like, you're just going to have to flank around that entire mesa to get up the backside, right? Because you're not getting vehicles up the southern face of that mesa. Uh, I would probably attack um, Indarcom from Aladdin and Broad, the cast hub, not Quartz Ridge. And the way up is, you know, directly south where Platoon Waypoint is now. So, yeah. Isn't but, that, that small thing right there, isn't that the vehicle spawn terminal, though? Yeah, yeah, it is. But yeah, it's the least. It, you treat Indarcom like a stronghold base. And I guess let me just very briefly explain how I, how I would suggest you all attack a stronghold base. Don't attack a stronghold base if there's pop there. Uh, unless unless we, we are overpopping them, or it's like 50-50, and you throwing 48 more people at it will give you a majority. Only attack a stronghold base when there is no one there. You, you do not ride up in our, in our comm against an enemy armor column. 
you go to Indarcom when there's no one there. You get a router set up, you amble in a couple Sundays, or you drive them up the hill, you hack the vehicle terminal before they even respond. You always want a two-thirds majority, at the very least, at the start, at all of these stronghold bases. Um, you, don't, you do not want to, well, to have a big armor fight just to attack a base that you might not take. Um, where, where, yeah, where the enemy is weak, you attack. And where the enemy is strong, you defend or you just avoid. Um, in this case, let, let's just look at the map real quick. We're the Western Warp Gate. Uh, we have Scarred Mesa, we have Crossroads, we have Quartz Ridge, and those, those are three of the four that I listed. The only thing left that we need to take, in my opinion, is Endarcom. If we take Endarcom, we'll be in a pretty strong position. So in this case, we have two options. We can either go defend the Ghost Capital at Aladdin Broadcast Hub, or just pull armor from Quartz Ridge Camp. And there's really not a wrong answer here. Uh, the Ghost Cat's probably going to clear itself, but it's always good to just make sure. Um, and Quartz Ridge also might have a couple people there. So, like, the, the A point might be blue right now. And if the A point's blue, I cap in Dark Hawk. But it might be a good idea to spawn in the Quartz Ridge just to kind of check it. But then we just got a tell that tells me that there isn't anyone there because Lowland Trading is now being kept. So, if someone is capping Lowland Trading, that means no one is on point at Quartz Ridge Camp, no enemies that is. So it would probably be worthwhile to go to Aladdin Broadcast Hub. So, like, that's how you kind of how you read the map. And since there's only 1 to 12 in, in, in Dark Array, if you have a full platoon, now is a good time to attack it. You have three of the four bases that you need, and they have no one there to stop you from going there to either hack or destroy the terminal, set up some Sundays, yada, yada, yada. Um, I want to wrap up the training very soon, but first I want to simulate an attack on Indarcom just to kind of illustrate this. I want everyone to hit the U key. We're going to go to Lightning Broadcast Hub and, the jo and join this 12 to 24. Probably about to move on. If anyone has any questions or comments, feel free to make them as we play, but we're just going to play for like 10 minutes. Go get, go defend Aladdin Broadcast Hub and then go get set up on Indarcom. And just kind of talk talk it through and then kind of do some live live fire practice. Alright, so usually sort of get is the weakest, I would agree. Uh, one of the reasons is the weakest is because you cannot take Scarmacy Skydo that easily. If you roll to the eastern side and you deploy some this on the eastern side, then you have to take the elevators and if they are already up there, you become a... It's a lack of shooting range, you just, you guys just... just and they shoot you and that's it. So that's why this card mess is so hard and that's why Eastern Warp Gate, in my opinion, is the weakest Warp Gate. Uh, for a Scar mess, uh, usually how I would like to do it, I... Go ahead and get out the salt. Times, I would usually take Scar mess uh, with a router first, if we have any, and then with a drop. Yeah. Because the, in that common scarred mesa are both bases that benefit from router runners. Yeah, yeah. My point is that you can pretty much super like it's pretty much impossible to take scarred mesa uh, with Sunderers if you're already some rough gate. Yeah, so let's pull some armor. I'm gonna pull. Let's pull some Sundays and start heading towards Indarcom, and we can kind of ride up the hill the natural way and kind of get set. I, I did also want to ask, if you're not a platoon leader, I mean, we're, we're, the squad leaders aren't really going to be making any decisions where to go, right? They can. So, it, like I said, it depends on the platoon. Uh, okay. Um, well, when I run a platoon, I try to put brood lords or above in squad lead positions, and I expect them to get their squads organized because I give individual squads individual jobs. And I also value the opinion of squad leads. So, you know, squad leads also kind of just need to know the map so they can advise the platoon lead, because the platoon lead might be super focused on an objective, and they need a reminder. Like, there'll, there'll be a lot of times where I'll just, like, PLB advised, you know, Scarred Mace is under attack, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, we need to redeploy so knowing the map and, and being, and, and don't be back seedy about it, but knowing the map and being a good advisor to the platoon lead is a very important job for a squad lead. 
So, Sunders, go ahead and follow me up here. This is how you get up. Oh, hey there. Just go up to the right. I'm going to repair right here. Just take, take this little path to the right. Yeah, and you just kind of snake around the, the A point. Don't get too close. Get on the edge. If you have a stealth Sunday, that's even better. And you just deploy as deep as you can while not getting too close to their spawn. Good job. See, see the the Bravo and the Charlie Sunder was were perfect. Um, yeah, they are perfect. Deployed Shield Sunday's also fine. Stealth Sunday's also fine. We want Sundays up on the Mesa. We don't want them down down all the way to the ground. We do not want blueberries to have to to run up here. And now we just need to get into the platoon waypoint building. Once we tag the A point, we just need to get into the platoon waypoint building. Which this triple stack right here. Ideally, there will be a router. Uh, come over to Gold Star, and I'll show you the balcony that Hitter was talking about. Hitter's here as well. Standing like right here, up against the railing, uh, we'll contest the point a bit. But we don't. After we tag it the first time, we don't technically go out every. We overwatch the point. We hold the building. A powder there. Um, another thing, as far as beacons are concerned, I want to talk to you guys about is come over to me. A lot of the times, a lot of the bases have a triple stack. That's what this building is called. It's a triple stack. And I want everyone from each squad to put a beacon down right here. I'll override. So I have an alpha beacon up. And what, what this is, is if we ever take a triple stack like this, we usually put this little sky shield up to protect the beacons from grenades and from fire from the roof. And then we put the beacons all together. So that if anyone needs to get into the overpop or if we start to run out of spawns, we have these beacons for our platoon as supplemental spawn. Remember, squad beacons are the only way, other than the join combat button, to get population. So having these up and making sure that your squad is is it is a good thing. Even in a casual platoon, if you're a squad lead, controlling your squad's beacons is a very important thing. Your squad needs to call out when they place a beacon. Beacons need to not be override road because if you place a beacon and there's already one up, it will override the last beacon, and then both of you are on like a 208. Guys, the further back you put them, the harder for the enemies to shoot. If you come to the to the ceiling, to the roof itself, you're gonna see that they have a better like right now they're on the stairs, so they can actually shoot them. Yeah, you so want to be a little bit further back. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. on the stairs, just on the flap. Where I am, now, like, in the corner, that's, that's the best. Yeah, now, if, we just, if everyone just looks at the mini-map and zoom it out a little bit with their mouse wheels, I just want to kind of go over, you see what, see where the blueberries are. The blueberries are in one of the the double stacks or whatever uh, in front of the a -ball. We do not want to be there. Uh, that's where blueberries go to die, uh, and they can hold that if they want, but it's, in my opinion, it's too close to the spawn. If we have, like, a... I don't know, like a 96 plus, like 140 here. It doesn't really matter. But I, you always want to consider the platoon waypoint building is for the SKL platoon. Well, the organized platoon holds this triple stack, and we hold the A point. The blueberries can go forward and, and kind of be the conscripts and go out and die. But, you know, we have to be disciplined in, uh, in important caps like this. We have to hold the doors. We have to protect the router. And if they do decide to spawn in and do a crash, we are poised to counter it. So let's do the last 50 minutes, seconds of this cap and try to take it. Mm, might be good if you talk about why we don't actually camp spa, spawn rooms. Yeah, I mean, I've been over this a few times, uh, especially on Discord, uh, and it's, it also is in my guide, so I'm not going to let... But on most bases, you do not want to camp the enemy spawn because one of the... And, and if any of you are new, I will explain crashes. There, a crash is basically when a, an organized platoon gets a bunch of people together and either gets in maxes or just gets or just stays regular as infantry. They ball up 48 guys together and they push out as one in like a human wave to get to the A point. 
SKL does them a lot. Everyone does them. Max crashes are very popular. The reason that we do not want to camp the enemy spawn is because most of the time it artificially creates a max cr uh, creates a crash. If you keep them pinned up in a place where they can't die but they can't exit, all of the people that aren't coordinating will naturally just stand there until there's a bunch of them, and then they will push out on, almost without even need to do so. Once they get a critical mass of people. A couple of them will be like, oh, well, hey, wait, there's 40 of us here. Well, let's run out. And then the rest of them will follow. It artificially creates a max crash or a regular crash. It's just not something you want to do. If you stay further back from their spawn, all of their randoms, all of their blueberry, will just trickle out in ones and twos and get killed by us as they approach the And I would say 90% of all bases follow these rules. There are some bases where it's good to keep on. Most of the time, it's not. So... We went over Indar uh, from a strategic level. We went over Indarcom uh, on a tactical level, and we kind of talked about crashes and beacons and squad descriptions and all that jazz. Does anyone have any questions before we wrap up today? Could you explain how to put down the re offensive and defensive requests again, please? Yeah, you just hit, hit M. And uh, if you don't have it started out, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you do have it started out, all you have to do is right-click on the map and uh, all the way down at the, at the bottom-ish above remove all waypoints should be an offensive and defensive. You want to put the offensive request on enemy territories where your blueberries can attack, and you want to put the defensive request on, on, on territories where you are being attacked. Yeah, I don't have, what, the war assets and stuff? No, you do you have have you started it out under squad search? No, I well I yeah. guess not. Yeah, then you wouldn't be able to do it if you hit okay. if you hit if you hit P under squad search. You need to unlock all at some point, not now, but at some point you need to get all the smoke and you need to get the request reinforcements thing started out. And then once you have request reinforcements started out, oh, you will then be. Yeah, you once you're a squad lead and you have that sorted out, you will be able to do offensive and defensive requests. So if you're in a platoon with me, a lot of the times I will be like in between fighting or whatever. I'll be like, okay, squad leads, can you put offensive requests on the Indar excavation site and defensive requests on Scarred Mesa? Or uh, and you know, squad leads will just bust down where I said, and then we move on with our life. Each platoon okay. can have up to four. But you do need to have them sorted out. It's 200 for the, the reinforcements and a... All right, any other questions? All right, thanks for bearing with me, everyone. I believe Horace recorded this, so we'll be putting it up on the Discord. Um, thanks for coming along. I hope you learned something, and I'll thanks. check in this time. All right. Thank you. Present. Thank you. Thank you once again. No problem.